<sighs> Years ago, I spent hours and hours converting all of my home movies and DVDs onto the computer so that I could place them on these drives. <sighs> Well, they've been sitting there for years because I didn't have a dedicated computer to be able to access those files to play on my TV. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I transferred all of those files to my new Synology DS1019 Plus and set this up as a Plex server so now I can watch those videos on my TV, my smartphone, or other streaming devices. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you. Now I've had many of you reach out in the past and ask, how can I take a video file that's on my phone and easily stream it to my Chromecast without any lag or any interruptions because you're screen mirroring and you see notifications pop up? Well, in today's video, I'm going to be using a NAS storage device. This is the Synology DS1019 Plus. This has 24 gigabytes of storage built into it, so I can have all of my files over here and access them anytime time from any of my other mobile devices through the Plex server. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can install a Plex server on the DS1019 Plus. And the great thing about this is you don't need a computer that's always on to do this. As long as the NAS device is on, it will be able to access those files at any time. So I can quickly stream those videos to my Chromecast, to my smart TV, or even to my mobile device. The first step is to actually transfer all the files that we have over here on the drive to our NAS storage device. Now this is very easy to do. All you need to do is take your storage unit, whatever you have, there are two USB ports on the Synology, so I can just plug those in and then I'm ready to transfer everything over to here. Once those are transferred, I can just keep these as backups. I don't really need to use them anymore. Once I have logged into my Synology Disk Station server, I then just need to open up File Station and then navigate to where I want to add these files to. So I'm just going to create a new folder here called Plex Media Server. And then I'm gonna open up a second window and down here you can see the different file drives that I have plugged in to the NAS. So I'm gonna to go to this drive and then I'm going to open up the files that I want to transfer over to that Plex Media Server file. And now we just need to wait for them to copy over. I do have about 600 gigabytes, so it is going to take some time. So we'll be right back. Okay, now that we have all of our files here under this Plex Media Server folder, the next thing I'm going to do is download the Plex Media Server. So we're gonna do that by going into the package center up here at the top left. We're gonna open this up and just search for Plex. And here I am going to install. Now this isn't the latest version of the Plex Media Server. I'll show you how to manually install that in just a bit. Once it is installed, head over to your control panels and then we're going to make sure that the Plex media server file that it created is shared. So we're gonna go into our shared folder and then here you can see that there is this new Plex folder. Now this was created once I installed the Plex application. So I'm gonna select on Plex and then I'm gonna to go to edit and up here you could adjust the name and here it's gonna show what volume it's going to use and then we can add the recycle bin if we wanted to here but then I can actually go over to the advanced features and here we can set a limit for how much data we want to have in this Plex shared folder. So right now my Plex server has about 600 gigabytes of data. So I'm actually going to turn this on and choose one terabyte. So I can add a bunch of more data, but not a ton of data. So it's not using up all of my NAS storage that's available. So once we have that set, then we're gonna go over here into the permissions tab, and we're gonna make sure that we give permissions to my other users. So right now I'm signed into an admin account, but if I sign into my user without the admin permissions, I still wanna be able to access this. So I'm gonna give myself the read and write permissions there. And then under here, there's nothing you need to change for advanced features or the NFS permissions. So we're gonna select okay right there. And then it has made the adjustments to that folder, and now the next step is we are going to make sure that we transfer all of our files that we want to access through Plex to the Plex app. So once we share that, now I have access to this Plex folder. So I'm gonna click these drop downs, open Plex, and then we see library. And I'm gonna take all the files that I stored in that Plex media server and I'm actually just going to drag them and drop them right here into the library folder. And then I'm gonna say move and overwrite. 
So once I do that, it's going to move all of my files right into the library folder. All right, once it has finished, we can just double check to make sure everything's in the right place. So here under Plex, under the library folder, then we have all of our different media files. And you can organize these however you want. So here are some of the things I've done. We like to separate the Christmas movies, the Halloween movies. Here I have a kids movie folder, so only movies I want the kids to watch. Here we have our movies, so all the other movies. And then here you have TV shows. Now within these, so let's go into the movies folder. Here I just have all my movies. Um, down here I have them all separated individually. So it just depends on kind of how you have your movies ripped to your computer. But I wanna show you that if I have a movie here, so if I go into Captain America, here I have the movie file, but then I have this other file called .srt. So if you want to have subtitles for that video, you actually need to go and find this .srt file and then put them both in one folder and then Plex will be able to find those so you can actually turn on subtitles, which is pretty cool. So now we can close that and we can open up the Plex media server. Now, if this is your first time going into Plex, you will need to create an account. I already do have an account, so I'm going to sign in. Now, the first time you sign up for Plex, it will ask if you want to set up a Plex Pass subscription. So you can sign up for it monthly, yearly, or by a lifetime subscription so that you always have access to all of these features. Now, none of this is required to use Plex, but let me show you some of the best features that it has. So right here, you can see that these are all the features you get with the free and the premium version. So you get 4K support, any format, available anywhere, just tons of different things that you get with either version. But some of the specific things you get with a Plex Pass is the ability to automatically upload photos directly from your camera, early access to apps, you can record live TV, you can have lyrics show up, you can sync your videos to your mobile device so that you can use them offline, you can set up multiple users, parental controls, photo albums, Plex DVR, Plex Pass perks, timeline, and trailers and extras. And we'll show you a few of those things near to the end of this video. So if you wanna try out these Plex Pass features for free, Plex gave me a code so that you can sign up and try out Plex Pass for 30 days for completely free. So make sure you guys check out that link in the description below and the code to sign up will be Tech with Brett 30 Thanks Plex for helping me out with that today. So now headed back here, let me talk to you about how Plex works. So here we have Plex Media Server that runs on the computer to keep your media. So in our case, we're running this on our NAS server. Now you could run Plex on a computer, but most of the time I don't have a computer that stays on all the time. So my Synology device is the perfect solution for that. Then it's going to scan our media. So it's gonna find our movies, our pictures, and any music we have that we put in the file. And then I can access that from my computer, my mobile device, tablet, or my smart TV. So let's go ahead and continue. And here it says we found the server. So here I can actually create a friendly name for the server. And then here I get the option to allow access outside of the home. So it's great to stream your media at home, but if I ever leave and I wanna access that from a friend's house or whatever, I wanna make sure that this is selected to be able to do that. So the next step is we're going to add our media into the Plex server. So all the different media files that we just transferred we're going to allow Plex to access that and organize it all automatically. So here we're going to add media to our library. And so first I'm going to add movies and I'm just gonna call it movies. And then the next step is to add our folder. So under volume one and then Plex and then library. Here you can see all of my different folders that I moved and I'm gonna select movies and I'm gonna select add and then add to library. So now it's going to go through and search all of those movies that I have, find album art and everything. So let's go ahead and add a few more libraries. So I'm actually gonna add movies and I'm gonna call this one kids movies. So there we got kids. So then we're going to add Christmas movies. Then we're gonna add Halloween movies. And then lastly, we're going to add TV shows. So you do have these other categories, TV shows, music, photos, and other videos but we're just gonna do TV shows today and then browse through the categories library. And then here I have my TV shows and select add, add to library. 
And now I'm done adding all the media I want to add now. And at any time, I can go back and add more different libraries. I'll show you how to do that in a second. So then make sure you go and download the Plex application on your mobile device, on your TV, whatever other smart device you have in your home so that you can access all your information. So now we're gonna finish the setup here on screen by selecting done. So what's happening now is Plex is currently searching through all of the media that we have added. So over here on the left side of the screen, you could have multiple servers if you wanted to, or you can actually share your server with others. So I can access those right here. Here I can see my different libraries that I have added. So we can see that it's currently searching through the movies library. And then down here you have some other online content that you could view if you wanted to. So then right now you can see that it found some of the movie titles, but there is no album art popping up. So as you wait a little bit, it will match your video to the content it finds so that it can load up all the appropriate information, the year, uh, related movies, actors that are in it, and all kinds of stuff. And down here at the bottom, you can see that it is currently searching for and matching metadata to the video. And if you have any problems with the matches, I'll show you how you can fix that as well. So I'm gonna give this just a few minutes, get everything updated, and then show you the next step. So after about an hour, it has now scanned through and found all of my media and matched all of the different information. So let's just go through and look at a few things. So if I go over to my movies tab over here on the left side, we can see all of our movies and it's pulled in all of the uh, movie art and everything. So um, going through here, everything looks really good. If for some reason something doesn't add up, if you hover over a picture, you can actually click the edit button and you could change information into here. You can change the movie poster if you like something different. You can also change the background that shows up. But if it matched the completely wrong movie, you can actually click the three dot menu right here and then you could select fix match or unmatch. Um, and if an entire area didn't work, you could click the menu over here and you could select refresh all metadata. So that would just re go through everything if something happened and it wasn't matching correctly. So I noticed that I have Arthur right here. I actually don't own that movie. This is supposed to be the Arthur Kids TV show. So what I wanna do is remove the data from this match. So I'm just going to select the menu right here and then I'm going to select unmatch. And there it has removed whatever title that it found and everything and it will show me a screenshot from the video so I can see what it is and I'll just have to go back and edit that later. And there you can see it's showing part of the video. So you can go through, it may take some time to get everything looking perfect, but right now the movies look great. I can go in the TV shows, there I have Seinfeld. Up here I have kids movies. Um, this first time loading it, so it's gonna take a second. And there you can see all that information loads up quickly. Here I have Halloween movies, and then I have some Christmas movies. So everything is looking really good. Now before we head over to the TV and try this out and try this on our mobile device, let me update the Plex server and show you a few other settings you may wanna check. So if I come up here and click the settings, and then I go over here to the server, so right here it says there is an update that is available and please install manually. So if I click that down here, you'll notice that it is downloading that new version that we can install. So once it has downloaded to my device, we need to go back to our Synology disk station server here. And in the package center, I have the manual install option. So I'm gonna select manual install and then I'm going to go to the browse and I'm going to look for the download. So it, it's going to browse on my computer. We're gonna look in the downloads folder. And there I have the new Plex Media server file. I'm gonna open that, select next. And then it says this is from an unknown publisher. Yes, I do want to continue. I know it's from Plex. I'm going to apply the update. And now that update has been applied. So I'm actually gonna close Plex right here. And then I'm going to select open Plex Media server. Now there are a few different UI changes in this new update, but we're gonna head back over here into the settings and then go down here to the general tab. And right now it shows that everything is up to date. Um, it shows my account and everything else. Next, I wanna go to the remote access. So here it is showing that I do have access outside of my network 
And then here we can specify our internet upload speed so it knows how much information it can send at once. So I know that my internet upload speed is actually at 50, but here I could limit how fast it is actually sending info. So I could limit the stream to a 720p stream so that it's not using all my bandwidth. So actually let's try out the eight megabits per second stream right there. And then we're gonna select save changes. If we go back to the home, we can watch videos right here. So as long as we're logged into our Plex server on the computer, I can just select play and then it will begin playing the movie right here. And I have all the controls and I can skip through it and everything. So you could play it here. You could also come up here to the select player and you could cast it to other devices on your network. But now that everything is working just fine on the PC, let's head over to the phone and show you how to use it on there as well as cast to the TV. Now the first thing to do is download the Plex application. You can get this on Android or iPhone devices, but I'm using my Note 9 today. Once we go into the app, we just need to sign into our account. Now once we are assigned in, it will ask us which server we want to use. So you can actually share your server with other people. I have a few other servers here that are available, but I'm just going to select on the server that I just set up. So once I get into the application here, we can see all the movies that I saw over on my computer. Down here at the bottom, we have the option to go in and see our TV shows. Here I could choose movies and I can scroll down and see many of the different categories that I have or um, certain movies by certain actors. Up here I can choose a drop down and choose some of the other categories. So let's say I went into kids movies. I could see all of those movies right here. Now if I want to watch one of the, mo the movies here, I just tap on it. And here I have a few options I could add to a playlist of maybe Disney movies or something like that. So here I do have the download option. Now that is only available to those with a Plex Pass subscription. And then here I have the menu where I could add to queue or delete the movie if I wanted to. So let's go ahead and play this. And I'm going to select play from beginning. So there you can see how quickly that loaded up on the phone it really was no problem. So now I'm gonna go ahead and play a movie on the Chromecast, but first I wanna set up what is called a pre-roll video that is only available for Plex Pass subscribers. So let's go ahead and get that set up real quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another library right from the Plex server here. So if we come over here to libraries, I'm gonna select plus, and then I'm gonna choose other videos for this. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a folder so it's in the same location as all of the other Plex files. And right here under library, I have a new file called pre-roll. So I'm gonna select add and then add to library. And it's gonna go ahead and scan the files in that folder to add them here. So now one of the cool things that you can do with the Plex Pass subscription is add pre-roll videos to anything that you watch. So if we go over here into the settings, and we go down here and choose extras, I can choose to have cinema trailers added to pre-roll. And then I'm going to hit the advanced features and I'm going to do a movie pre-roll video. So just like back in the day when you would see THX at the movie theater and you have those really cool intros, you could actually add those right here into Plex. So here it says enter the full path to the pre-roll video file. So if I go back over here, into my media and I'm gonna to go to other shows. And so I have this THX intro right here. I'm gonna select menu, get info. And here you can see the file path. I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to head back into the settings, go to extras. And then right here, I'm going to paste that file path and select save changes. So now that we have that set up, I'm gonna go into the app and select the Chromecast icon and choose the Chromecast Ultra, which is behind me. And then all I need to do is select my favorite movie. And once it loads up, then I just need to select play. And then as soon as it plays, it's going to add that play roll movie over here to the TV before it actually plays the video. So here, this is a Terminator 2 THX sound test. And it's really nice to have this at the beginning to get you in the movie watching mood. Now, as soon as that's done playing, it's gonna go ahead and go and play the movie. So now that that's loaded up, let's show you how quickly it's able to buffer as I scroll through the different parts of the video. So here, if I skip a little bit ahead, it loads up very quickly. Let's go back a little bit 
and there you can see it loads as well. So that's one of the great things about having the DS1019 Plus is you can store all your media on here. There's plenty of storage available and I can add more if I need to. It also has the ability to run the Plex server without having to have a computer on at any time. And then it's also able to run two 4K streams simultaneously. So if we're watching a movie up here and my kids are watching a movie on the other room on a smart TV, it's able to play those in full quality, which is just really awesome to be able to have within the home. So if you're at all like me and you've spent hours and hours digitizing this content and put it on a storage device, maybe movies or maybe your own family home videos, I would definitely recommend checking out the DS1019 Plus. Now Synology did send out this device for me to check out, but I can definitely recommend this as a way to store all your movie files or as a backup solution for your company or even here at home I have tons of different YouTube videos in 4k now that I want to store on here and this has been a really great option so if you guys are looking for a way to back up all that information definitely check out this device I'll leave a link to it in the description below as well as if you're interested in checking out Plex I'll leave the 30-day free trial information in the description below as well if you guys have any further questions let me know and if you want to check out my original setup video and other ways that I'm using the Synology device make sure you check out the video over here on the side. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.